All right. So we are uh, live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so I would like to uh, give a warm welcome to all of you. Um, uh, so thank you for coming uh, and joining this uh, biweekly sutra discussion. Uh, let us begin the discussion by paying respect and homage to the Buddha by reciting Namo Tassa three times together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. I pay my respect and homage to him, the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened Buddha. <clears throat> Hello, uh, everyone. Um, Good evening and greetings to all of you. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, our venerable monks and nuns uh, to our audience. So today um, <clears throat> uh, we have the presence of venerable monks and nuns uh, from different cities in North America. Uh, as you all know, uh, the the venerable monks and nuns in the Theravada tradition are going to begin uh, the three month uh, Vasa, the rain retreat, uh, rain season retreat, uh, starting from uh, this uh, Wednesday, uh, July 13th, is the full moon day. But majority of the uh, temples in the West had their Vasa Aradhana uh, program. Uh, yesterday, <clears throat> so Sunday, and some uh, monks uh, actually had a monastic gathering um, at uh, different locations to perform the Patimokha Desana Vinaya Karma, and I was just informed by Bhante Nanda that they had a gathering of the monks uh, at the New York Buddhist Vihara, which is uh, great. Uh, we are very happy to know that monks coming together like that. And, uh, and here, uh, Bhante Jinanand also organize, is organizing such Vinay Karma. is happening uh, this Wednesday, right? Yeah. And uh, so we are going to do the Patimokha Desana. Uh, so today, uh, some monks uh, could not join the meeting because of uh, the uh, Vinay Karma program. But I'm very happy to uh, see uh, all of you uh, uh, joining this uh, Zoom platform, uh, the biweekly Sutra discussion. And I would like to introduce uh, our venerable uh, monks and nuns. <clears throat> so we have uh, venerable Sarana Palatero. Uh, he's joining us from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, we have Venerable Aya Dhammadina uh, joining us from uh, Virginia. And we have uh, Venerable Bhikkhu Jayasara. Uh, he's joining from New Jersey, USA. And this is your first time, uh, Venerable Jayasara. And we are very happy to have you. Thank you for, for coming together. And thanks to Bhante Kusala for making the connection. <laughs> And then we have uh, Bhante Dhammarakita uh, from uh, Ottawa, Canada. And we have Verbal uh, Horana Anuruddha joining us from Cambridge, uh, Ontario, Canada. And we have Verbal Tridao joining us from Florida, USA. Uh, we have Verbal Chandananda uh, Tero from, joining us from Ottawa, Canada. Then we have Bhante Jinananda uh, joining us from uh, Ottawa, Canada, and of course, Bhante Jinananda, we were missing you uh, for past couple of discussions. You were on a Dhamma tour mission in Sri Lanka and some other countries. Thank you for uh, coming back to our uh, discussion. Um, and then we have Bhante Kusala from here, our temple in Toronto, Mississauga. Then we have Venerable 
Uh, Digali Somuangsha joining us from Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. Then we have uh, Venerable Shanta Sobana joining us from Los Angeles, uh, USA. And then we have Venerable uh, Kotopola Sumeda joining us from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, then we have Bante Sankicha joining us from Detroit, Michigan, USA. And uh, then we have Bante Kalubovila Ananda uh, joining us from Cambridge, Ontario. And we have Bante uh, Samadhigan Vimala Jyoti, uh, we don't see you. Then Bante uh, Nanda Loke from Ottawa, uh, your uh, video is not on. So uh, thank you for coming and it is a great joy to have your presence. It is a blessed moment for all of us to come together for this unique discussion. We also have some uh, lay people, uh, lay friends who, uh, who are joining us uh, on Zoom platform uh, from uh, different cities. And, uh, and also we have our lay friends joining us uh, on uh, Facebook and YouTube live. And I, I would like to welcome all of you as well. Uh, so today we are going to uh, discuss uh, a, a different topic. Actually, this is a question uh, from uh, one of our uh, friends who always uh, watch our program on YouTube. Uh, and uh, the question is, what is the practical and best technique to deal with physical uh, and emotional psychological pain? Uh, so this is actually a, a big question. I know uh, venerable monks and nuns always see people, people come to see you and you are the best uh, counselors uh, and you uh, give uh, some best uh, advice how to deal with such pains. And I'm pretty sure you have some stories and you can tell a story or you can uh, share some uh, words of uh, wisdom uh, for to help the, especially those who are going through physical and psychological pains. So I have no particular order. And if you like to uh, share your words of wisdom with our audience, uh, please raise your hand then accordingly, I will invite you to uh, speak up. And also a kind reminder to uh, our friends uh, who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube, if it is possible, please uh, feel free to share uh, this year program in your social media timelines for the great benefit of your friends and family members. And sharing is also what we call Dhamma Dana, uh, gift of Dhamma. And you never know, someone might be benefiting from uh, this uh, uh, discussion uh, with the monks and nuns. Uh, so please uh, uh, feel free to share this program in your social media timelines. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask this question from all our venerable monks and nuns now. So what, uh, what could be the, uh, the, the, the practical and the best uh, uh, technique uh, to deal with physical or emotional psychological pain? And if you uh, like to say something, please, uh, I can uh, give the floor to you. Uh, anyone? Uh, okay, we have Venerable Shanta Sobana from uh, Los Angeles. He raised his hand. Uh, Venerable Shanta Sobana, so uh, what's your story and what's the advice you could give to our friends? Okay, thank you very much, very much Venerable Sirs. And uh, especially thank you, Venerable Sananapala, that uh, getting this topic yeah. to the table. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because uh, I was thinking maybe we're going to have a discussion about rainy retreat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a very practical uh, topic, and I think uh, it is uh, applicable for uh, most of the people around the world nowadays. So yeah. when it comes to pain, so physical, psychological pain, emotional pain, the very first thing that we have to understand, we have to accept there is a pain. Mm -hmm. Because when most of the time when people come to us and say, 
that they have a pain. Sometimes we try to give different, different uh, opinions regarding that without understanding what is the exactly the meaning of the pain. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I used to, I used to practice acupuncture and I used to treat poor people. Mm -hmm. So uh, during that time, what I understood that, uh, especially when it comes to acupuncture and uh, uh, Ayurvedic method, uh, the uh, even in our uh, meditation, the pain is not a kind of like a, such a bad thing. Mm -hmm. The pain mm -hmm. is a messenger. Mm -hmm. Try to bring uh, information for us to protect our life. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the more important thing that we have to understand. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I think pain is something very bad. So that idea create a kind of like a different way of reaction within ourselves for our own pain. But when you look at the pain as a messenger, what, why this pain here? What it try to tell us? Then you become more open to it. So it's as example, even in the, in the meditation, when it come to the, the uh, contemplating on sensation, mm. So you, you don't reject it, you don't resist that, you go into it. So the same thing when it comes to physical pain, that uh, one of the major important thing that we have to understand, we have to accept it. And it is, uh, it, if there is a physical pain, it is good for us because it try to tell we are doing something wrong. Mm. We, we disconnect from our natural way of being. So, that as a solution, there are many ways that people go through the pain as a solution for that very, very important thing. The very first thing, if anybody feel any pain, the very first thing they need to do, take deep breathing. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time when the, when the pain comes, suddenly it has a connection with the lungs the, and the, the brain and it is start to disconnect and the, the mind start to become so, so cloudy and as a result of that, our lungs get effect and become slowed down. So then the, the entire, the, the breathing processes start to slow down. So because of that, what happens, sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system start to slow down. And mm -hmm. then our entire, the defense system become kind of like a, a block. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing, whoever go through any pain, one of the major important thing to understand deeply breathing and breathe out. Mm. So that is one thing. Another thing is if they can uh, have kind of like a drink much water and uh, uh, some, for some people for certain pain, kind of like a, if there is a pain suddenly happen, then maybe you need to drink cold water. And mm. if there is a pain that keep happening kind of like a few days, Maybe you need to drink kind of like a warm water a little bit mm -hmm. while you have the experience the pain. So that will help them to release the, uh, the little bit. Mm -hmm. So, and other thing is that uh, the, sometimes we, we don't understand the very behavior and the very nature of the body. This body is very fragile. You know, when it comes to animal life, they are so strong than us. They can survive in with many, many situations. As example, cat. So if you drop the cat from even 100 feet uh, in a, a high building, that mm. it capable to survive itself, but we can't do that. Mm. So that's why we, and we have to understand the very nature of the body and we have to, to prepare for that. So that's why we need the good health. So being strong, physically being strong is very necessary for any human being. But mm. unfortunately what happens, we mostly neglect ourselves and we abuse our, our own life. And as a result of that, we become so weak inside us physically before we go into mentally. Mm. So that, uh, that's why we have to take care of our body, doing exercise and uh, uh, taking necessary kind of a developing a lifestyle yourself to, to have a kind of like a very healthy lifestyle as a Buddha mentioned, Arogya Paramalaba. Mm -hmm. so, so health is the, the greatest wealth that we have to develop. It, 
but the thing is when we get into the pain we start to look how we can get out of it but mm -hmm. there is a way before you get into that you can protect as example you know when it comes to sports like boxing mm -hmm. you know wrestling and uh, like kickboxing you know yeah. they they're ready for the pain mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so when they get hit they can bear it so in our ordinary life the same in day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. if we know there is a pain if you are ready for that if you can handle it then you can go through it mm -hmm. and uh, so that is one thing and and when it comes to deeper level of understanding we have to see that uh, pain is not permanent mm -hmm. Whatever the pain we go through, it is not permanent. It's possible. It's always changing. So if you are capable to understand it, but when we are in the pain, when we in the middle of the pain, it's kind of like a, we, we, can't, we can't understand that kind of things, but it needs certain kind of practice. Mm. But, so how, when it comes to the physical pain, it's always possible to change and the body has its own way to depend from any kind of injuries. So we have to allow it to happen and we have to accept it. And when it comes to emotional pain, it is totally different. Mm -hmm. So, so the, shows that the emotional pain mostly come as a result of the moods. Mm. So the mood, how the mood moods arise, so we always have the comparison inside us. We, we want to be somebody. And at the same time, we, we already experience someone as who we are. So in between that, there is a kind of like a gap. So when we experience that gap, oh, I want to be, but I am like this. In mm -hmm. that situation, always it triggers the, the comparison or the memory. And so as a result of the memory and the thought in the present moment we experience, emotions arise. Mm -hmm. The very emotions itself mean the energy in motion. It's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's the very behavior. It's the very nature of the mind. But we have a very preconditioned mind. Think that oh, emotions are bad. Mm -hmm. oh, we, uh, when we feel sad, worried, disappointed, oh, we have to fight through that. It is not good to feel sad. So kind of like that. That very misunderstanding in the very moment that whatever you experience create a, some kind of very negative reaction. Mm -hmm. So just imagine when we have the very, very negative way of reaction itself in the moment, the result not going to be positive. Mm -hmm. So then that we have to know that the, the emotions is a very natural behavior of the, the body and mind. Mm. And at the same time, it's tried to guide us towards something. So that's why in the very famous uh, topic nowadays, transform your emotions to intelligence. Yeah. So how, why? Because that means the emotions has power to take you from this level to something. But when we don't have a higher purpose, what will happen that emotions always going to flow towards something that whatever it wants. Mm. So then the, this moods, if we are capable to understand the very present moment, whatever we go through rather than caught up with the thoughts and rather than bringing the, the, our past or the comparison regarding our kind of like a, the past experience we, we went through, if you are capable to see the, in, the very, in that very moment of what, how the thoughts happening, it bring us from kind of like a doing mode. So the, the emotions always try to trigger something. It take us to, to do something always. It's called the doing moods. Mm. So when we are in emotions, we always try to do something. Maybe the most of time people, what they do, they start to eat. You know, they start to talk. You know, they start to, to kind of like uh, memorize or repeat their minds. So kind of like, so emotions bring the moods. Mood has a category. 
and one is doing mood. So the doing moods always depending from the past experience. So if you are in the doing moods, you have to take a very critical analytical action to yourself. It called the being mood. So that is why the meditation comes. You just be there. Mm. So if anybody go through emotions in that very moment, if that person can settle down itself without doing anything, just be in the moment mm. without without talking, without walking, without doing anything, just mean that means shut down all the bodily, verbally, mentally actions. Mm. And in that very moment, what will happen rather than uh, trigger the, the past memory, it will, it will take the mind to seeing mood. Mm. So that is the very, the, the very nature of the Vipassana meditation. So because once you see your own thoughts, that's where the wisdom comes. Mm. That's why in it called in, in the Satipatthana Sutta, it's called the Pajanati, just know. Mm. Because if you just know in that very moment, you can see what it what will happen to it. What, what you can see when because from doing mood to being mood, and once you transform to seeing mood, you see. It's moment by moment, moment by moment, you, it change. Mm. So once you see the change, it's, it's done. Yeah. Because, yeah. but most of the time when we are in the pain that our thoughts stagnate and we start to know, oh, why it happened to me, this is me, is, is kind of like a, a rumination. It's always think, oh, it is me, it's happened to me, only me. Why, yeah. it, why it happened again and again? Yeah. Why? Because we don't see the change. Mm. So when we don't see the change, it we, we take it as a kind of like a uh, self-centered experience. Mm. And then it becomes more painful. So it, then as a solution to whoever in, in pain, just remember, start to breathing deeply. Mm and start to take water. And uh, another thing is, know it's change. And the best thing is, know it is a messenger come to survive you. Yeah, I think that that's a beautiful message. Thank you, uh, Bhante Shanta Sobana. I knew uh, because you, you have a background in acupuncture and also a yogic tradition, and also I see some of your activities, how you combine all this together. So it's a beautiful message you have shared. You know, pain is not a bad thing. It's a, it's a messenger. It's a, it's, it's, it's a way to uh, transform your life. And also how you said uh, from uh, doing more, um, mode or doing mode or being mode and the seeing mode. I think this is a, these three steps are very essential to transform or, or to deal with the physical and emotional pains. I know there will be more uh, uh, insights coming in, in, uh, in during this discussion. So now we have uh, Venerable Anuruddha from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. So what's the story, okay. Venerable Anuruddha? Thank you, Venerable Sir. Uh, actually, Bhante uh, Shanti Sobhana uh, told, I think, everything about I was about to tell in <laughs> most of the themes. <laughs> Actually, uh, he shared uh, everything uh, in a very good uh, manner and in a, a very uh, beautiful way. So uh, I will highlight a few things again uh, in my in uh, in my uh, top, uh, the, in this topic. Uh -huh. So uh, actually, as per the question, like he asked, uh, how uh, we manage the physical and psychological pain. The first advice I will, uh, because we don't know here actually uh, in into what extent uh, he or she is having that pain. So the first advice I will give you, follow the medical advice. That is the first step I will give you. Follow the medical advice according to uh, the medical treatment. If they ask to do anything, so go ahead with those. And uh, uh, the moment that you feel uh, you want to go uh, with a different path, like the spirituality or the mindfulness path, 
uh, then you can look into uh, the other things like according to your the religion if you are a buddhist like then you can uh, uh, reach to a buddhist monk or any other uh, person who has understanding about buddhism how to uh, manage uh, physical and psychological uh, pain actually when it comes to buddhism mostly the uh, uh, in buddhism we are looking uh, we are uh, handling we are uh, treating and we are looking uh, understanding about the psychological pain uh, over the physical pain so uh, because even uh, lord buddha could not avoid the physical pains there are some stories that lord buddha and even the other enlightened monk monk uh, who had physical pain uh, the stomach ache and also the uh, lord buddha had a headache and there are some uh, few incidences uh, incident that lord buddha even uh, had physical pain mm. but uh, when it comes to buddhism uh, we can talk about and the buddhism is all about getting rid of the psychological pain and being happy it is uh, about the happiness so uh, when someone have uh, the psychological pain or physical pain as uh, bante santa sobana highlighted the first is piece to recognize that uh, i am having this kind of pain mm. and accepting it that uh, that that is the first step i guess but uh, if you can't do that then uh, there is a like we have to have some kind of solace uh, to uh, get rid of that uh, the uh, repetitive mood that we are having the pain means we are having a repetitive experience again and again uh, so that is why we are having that pain mm-hmm. always uh, according to the buddhism also the buddha's uh, the uh, preaching and also our experiences we can have only uh, one single input at one at one time uh, from our faculties we have six faculties like our uh, eyesight hearing and uh, like you know that six, six faculties mm-hmm. we can have only one uh, recognition at once so mm-hmm. the, when we are having a repetitive pain uh, that means we are having a, re- a repetitive experience that is why we are uh, having that longer period of pain yeah. again and the, as bante uh, sant sobna highlighted pain is is a messenger like all is the pain is the opposite of the happiness that or the happy feeling that we are getting the uh, opposite of the like the sukha dukkha right so again when we are having that uh, pain repetitively the same experience and again the first step that we need to do it we should get our mind to some uh, other uh, focus some other thing like you can as bande sahab that sobna highlighted the best thing that we have is you can breathe there is one thing you can do then you can you can get that focus into something else when you are focusing on breathing you get that experience to different thing if you can do that then you can get rid of that pain the experience of pain for a moment but it will not last long uh, for a long period if you are having that uh, the physical pain or repetitive the pain when we are having that repetitive pain again and again we go into stress or anxiety or the psychological uh, the uh, clinical level psychological issues so the first step is to get rid of that uh, the repetitive experience so we you can uh, listen to the song or you can uh, watch a movie or you can go out with friends or i am recommending even those things if you can't get rid of uh, uh, the that repetitive pain again and if you are going going through a breakup or if you are having some kind of uh, the the psychological issue you can do uh, that kind of thing at the very beginning mm-hmm. because that will help you to uh, get rid of that uh environment that uh, the mind uh, set then you can for uh, you will get a different experience for a temporary time but that will help you to calm down your mind and body at the beginning mm-hmm. because uh, in uh, actually as per lord buddha highlighted in, in the kaya sutra there is a sutra called kaya sutra in that sutra lord buddha highlighted as our body needs always some the things to depend on like Uh, the food uh, the breathing water those things like we can't even uh, live five minutes without breathing yeah. so our body needs those the basic things to function like that to to be mindful we need to have the uh, the uh, the calmness in our body and mind it says in that sutra in sing uh, in, in uh, singhali is uh when uh, uh chitta viveka and kaya viveka ethically samma satiya arambuna ve that means they when you have the uh, calmness in your body and mind 
that is the moment you start the mindfulness without mm. that you can't start that mindfulness practice mm. to, because that uh, long term solution for all these uh, things that psychological pain and the uh, the physical pain even is the one and only path as uh, lord buddha highlighted is that mindfulness path so mm. but to get into the mindfulness practice we need to have that calmness and uh, in our body and mind that is why you need to follow the the basic the things that sila uh, also come into action in this place mm -hmm. so and according to lord buddha's path that uh, the sila and uh, the meditation and those things will help you to start mindfulness practice by having that calmness in the body and mind uh, and also uh, when we comes to the meditation there is two part like the samatha and vipassana focus and mindfulness meditation according to my understanding you need that uh, the uh, focus meditation to calm down your mind when you have that busy mind mm -hmm. as uh, if you are in a pain that means your by mind is so busy that is why because you are having repetitive experience and again and again that is why you are going into that states mm -hmm. so when you are having that you need to calm down that Uh, the mind uh, as i explained so some of the meditation also a practice that you can do even this breathing meditation you get your focus into different thing and you can get rid of that uh, 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 experience for a moment mm. so when you do that some of the meditation then you you can get that calmness in your body and mind and you, then you can start the uh, mindfulness practice real the uh, vipassana meditation mm. that means actually uh, as uh, bante sandh sobana highlighted it is the practice of being able to uh, doing to uh, see into being so if you can come to the state of just being then you can you will be able to uh, understand how dukkha or the uh, pain happen within ourselves the psychological pain mainly happen within ourselves and understand how uh, the uh, the four noble truths and get rid of the suffering that is the long term the uh, 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 solution for the uh, this uh, psychological pain yeah. so uh, those are the things i wanted to uh, highlight that except the uh, bande sam sobana highlighted there yeah, thank thanks. you sir. thank you thank you uh, uh, venerable anuruddha for sharing your insights with us and i think i i really like how you started the uh, your presentation by saying uh, you know to go and see a doctor and if, if you know uh, we cannot refer, we are not doctors right <laughs> we are monks and and of course uh, although we can help uh, patients the people with, to a certain degree uh, but they, they they have to if it is if it is uh, too much of the uh, medical condition is too much then they have to go and see the doctors their their health and then we can help them to take care of their mind okay right? so this is very important and also how you highlighted saying uh, from go going from doing to being and from being to seeing and from seeing back to being i think that's a beautiful <laughs> way to look at it right it's very interesting thank you Bhante Kusala from Mississauga, uh, Toronto. Uh, what's in your mind? Um, very interesting uh, thoughts have been shared already by Bhante Santa Sobhana and Bhante Horana Anuruddha. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to say that Bhante Santa Sobhana mentioned uh, the survival skills of uh, animals. Mm. And he said we can throw a cat a uh, hundred floors down a building. Mm. Uh, I want to highlight that please don't do that. Um, <laughs> he's not asking anyone to throw a cat down a building. Uh, that's not the message. He's just comparing us with uh, animals and how they can survive. So this request I make uh, is made out of compassion for cats. But nobody has to try that. so uh, about uh, the best practices about uh, uh, like getting rid of psychological pain um, i think there is some uh, desperate need here that we need to understand someone is going through a tough time and uh, uh, we need to also look at this person really uh, individually and see what is really affecting them um and for that i invite you to if you are in toronto area please come to meet bante sarnapala or we monks here 
uh, we would like to help we would like to listen to you and uh, walk you through because sometimes the practice that we present now has to change over the course of your treatments you know as you as you go through a course of treatments uh, uh, the practice may change so the you know this this very question um, has a little bit of a need a self control um, i think we need to unpack there a little bit mm. and i know uh, when there is a physical pain uh, you can go see a doctor and it's visible most of the time and you have uh, we have these scanning machines we can use uh, to find out where exactly the problem lies within the body but when it is psychological is equally pain, painful equally miserable uh, so much suffering is buried in there uh, and there's so much information needing to be told to someone and the hands that you are trying to fall into they don't hold you tightly sometimes they make your psychological pain worse than before mm. so there's betrayal uh, and that your status as a boss of a certain place or a staff member of some place may prevent you from sharing all that information about you to someone else because of the fear of losing your dignity and a status yeah. uh, so these are some things you know that keep you from sharing this story so you seek help outside but that too has some obstacles because you know getting help from a professional counselor is a costly thing mm. uh, people therefore they don't approach uh, these places be, uh, until it gets worsened and sometimes you go to a lake and sit by the lake and cry alone and come home slightly distracted and this may also even cause an accident on your way home uh, so i think uh, we need to look at uh, these questions you know if it is uh, for example if it is grief that you are dealing with because of a loss of a pet or loss of a child a loss of a parent or loss of your wealth or something uh, there are uh, you know ways to approach this problem because uh, when there is a problem it's not just one thing causing the problem mm. so you, it's normally many things leading to this problem therefore um we can't say that you know it's just uh because uh, when when you are looking for a practice um when and that there is an issue that we are dealing with uh, we may have to approach it in a gradual process because you know when one cause disappears its result also may disappear but there may be some residue of the problem and when we deal with that uh, we can lift up certain um, weight from your shoulder by really tapping on that side of the problem and gradually like opening up yourself to talk to someone process it through and uh, embrace the trust you know gaining trust of that person and eventually uh, seeking both you know medical and psychological help to uh, really process through and find the techniques that can help you i think um, in terms of looking at the buddhist sutras i find uh, um vitakka santana sutta uh, mm -hmm. might be very helpful to you this is found in the middle end discourses in that uh, there are several techniques taught by the buddha for monks who are dealing with distracting thoughts this is not psychological pain um this is a uh, distracting thoughts which you know when it's a uh, psychological pain it can be felt in your heart or in your head and i think bhante santa sobhan and bhante anruddha mentioned uh, several things about uh, where you may feel this pain when uh, when it is strongly felt you feel this ice you know disconnectedness isol you feel isolated from the world um then but if it is a thought that is distracting you in the first place see if there is a hindrance lying underneath mm. such as um, uh, strong attachment to someone 
or strong, strong uh, hatred toward the situation or someone, or if it is your own uh, nature or negligence that has led to this situation, if you are doubting your progress, uh, if it is sloth and torpor, um, so many factors can contribute to the present situation. So if it is a distracting thought like lust, the Buddha says, you know, um, it's like someone, it's like a carpenter using a finer peg to remove a stronger peg in a piece of wood. And using the finer peg means, you know, using something like something uh, less distracting, like loving kindness in place of anger. And that way you are, you have, a, uh, you have, a, you have something beautiful that you can cultivate and replace your, uh, replace the space that is taken by that distracting thought in your mind. Mm. So that's a, one example. Uh, and it goes pro you know, progressively uh, into greater details. And if that technique doesn't work, try to see the repulsive nature of your thought, the danger of it. You know, it's like someone, it's a girl who's, who's, uh, Possess. I mean, who's who's thinking highly about her beauty uh, now has a carcass as a garland in her body, like a snake, dead snake or something, and she quickly removes it from her beautiful body because she she doesn't want anything anything ugly uh, in in her body. Just like that, you know, the Buddha says, observe the danger of having these uh, thoughts and feelings because you know some psychological pains uh, are strong feelings i think bante uh, santa soban mentioned quite a bit about this so um, and we can also look at aghata pativinaya sutta i'm just mentioning the name here so i don't want to take too much time and then sabhasava sutta and even satipatthana sutta for us to deal with these issues depending on how ready you are and how how much time is available to you and uh, how much willing you are to walk through these steps um, i think that helps so i didn't mention the best technique <laughs> um, i would say there is no best technique as such it depends on where you are Mm -hmm. and uh, what situation you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Bhante. Yeah, thank, thank you, Bhante Kusala. Actually, you have given uh, uh, a wonderful, uh, great references to some sutras of the Buddha where we can find some techniques how to deal with your own uh, physical or emotional pains and sufferings. And I think uh, uh, it, that's the best way to uh, 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 go through uh, your own uh, pains to understand what are these pains, where do they come from, uh, and how to deal with them. I think it's, it's, uh, it is uh, physical and mainly the psychological. And, and the sutras that you have referred to, uh, those uh, sutras contain some wonderful techniques. So I would highly recommend our audience, uh, uh, you know, if you're going through or if you know someone is going through uh, some emotional, psychological pains and suffering, uh, please uh, uh, ask them to read this sutra. So thank you, Bhante Kusala. Next, uh, uh, let's go to uh, Bhante Sankicha from Detroit, Michigan, USA. Uh, Bhante Sankicha, what is in your mind? Uh, yes, Bhante, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. I'm really enjoying the discussion and the information uh, being shared by our venerable Bhantes. I think a uh, uh, couple of things to mention, you know, as uh, we all can see and understand the pain is uh, uh, to be having multi causes. It's not one thing uh, causing the pain. There can be so many different things and aspects to it. And also, as Bhante Kusala mentioned, it can be therefore a uh, multidisciplinary uh, approach to mm -hmm. handle the pain. So therefore, I think uh, just like the stress management, uh, mm -hmm. the pain management is also a very uh, important field area today, mm -hmm. as many people are uh, suffering from it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be very uh, subtle and uh, how it is uh, experienced, 
how it is uh, influencing us, uh, our personal, uh, our relationships, and many things actually. It's uh, interconnected, as we can see. Uh, one important thing actually uh, to focus here, uh, as we identified about three aspects uh, where we experience the pain, physical, mm. uh, mental, and uh, emotional mainly. So if you think about, uh, can we control the pain exactly? Mm. Can we stop the pain? Can we completely get rid of the pain? So when we look at these three aspects, the physical pain actually, it's a built-in kind of uh, survival factor as we learned so far. Mm. Uh, so therefore, when we uh, have a sickness, uh, when we get into accidents or any other physical problems, pain is in inevitable. Uh, we cannot really say no to it. So we can get medicine, uh, we can try different means to control it, reduce it and manage it. But uh, physical pain is actually something we cannot really get rid of it. We can uh, control it. Uh, but uh, the two, two other aspects, uh, psychological and emotional pains actually, these are completely curable. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it, uh, there are solutions as we learn from these uh, uh, different discourses actually. Uh, so that is very important to understand. So even uh, that would be very important to understand what is the greatest pain actually, either physical, mental or emotional, mm. you know. In many cases actually, as we can see in, for many people, especially in relationships and other areas of pain, the psychological and emotional pains uh, seem to be very strong and powerful. People have very hard time dealing with them, you know, getting rid of them. But we can see uh, why people are suffering that much from these uh, areas because of these uh, uh, tendencies in ourselves. You know, that's why actually we can control these psychological and emotional pains. You know, that is directly depending on how we interact with the pain. You know, even the physical pain can be controlled and uh, reduced even by maintaining how we interact with that, our reactions to pain. So this is where we understand the resistance actually mostly causes us the pain rather than the physical exact pain. As we uh, heard actually, uh, having question, you know, why, why, why me <laughs> mostly? Yeah. Why at this time, not someone else? You know, people have this kind of attitudes with the pain. You know, mm. uh, so we can see that uh, rather than the, uh, the physical exact pain, how we interact with that, our attitudes actually uh, has a, um, a lot to do with what we are going through, you know. And uh, when you think about uh, some attitude, you know, for some people, some people need pain, <laughs> you know. That means uh, people have become conditioned to it. You know, yeah. some people, uh, kind of enjoy the pain, you know, that means they cannot survive without pain, you know, that means uh, they like to complain, you know, that is what I'm talking about, you know, it is not that they want pain, but they enjoy complaining, you know, therefore they look for some problem, even in the physical <laughs> experience, you know, yeah. they want to complain always, you know, something, they kind of enjoy it, so this is a kind of negative attitude we have towards pain, you know, so these are something we can control. So when you think about the physical, uh, mental and emotional pain, so this is exactly uh, the area that we are dealing with. You know, when we learn the Dhamma, when we practice meditation, even yes. counseling, um, that can be directly uh, controlled actually. You know, if we know the right techniques, right approach, mm -hmm. when and where to apply our knowledge, our Dhamma, even our uh, spiritual friends, you know, the use in the counseling, appropriate means and on the proper time, you know, they can be controlled. Uh, so as an example, you know, the, the physical and uh, mental and emotional pains are mostly coming from the past, if you think about, it. you know, one of the areas, you know, one of the ways that many people are suffering, uh, uh, the pain is from the past something that happened in the past, you know, in relationships, uh, somebody said something bad, you know. So all these things are coming from the past. So we as human beings have the attitude of bringing this dead past to the present and uh, ruminate it, 
you know. So we suffer a lot. You know, that's where the, the magical word comes in handy, which is the present moment, <laughs> right? Yeah. We, we learn how to let go of the past. You know, many people are having this uh, problem of uh, having a hard time letting go of the past, yeah. you know. So if you think about another aspect of the uh, pain, you know, uh, mental and psychological pain, according to the Dhamma, the Lord Buddha teaches us to understand the process of experiencing the pain you know, how it comes to us, you know, uh, between <clears throat> our body and mind, the nerve system, you know, and all these things are involved there. The past memories, comparisons, along that process, identifying this pain with ourselves, making it me, mine, myself, mm -hmm. you know, that directly comes in line with the, another important discourse in the Dhamma, which is the Giriman and the Sutta. Yeah. I think that would be a very powerful antidote for this problem, you know, the pain. How we analyze it, how we look at it, the impermanent nature, non-self nature of the pain. So these are some important uh, approaches. And also we should not forget the uh, another important discourse, couple of discourses, uh, the Bojangas, right? We, yeah. we learn even Buddha, some of the enlightened monks, uh, they, when they were suffering from some physical problems, it was advised to contemplate on the bojangas, these spiritual faculties, mm. uh, the factors of enlightenment in a deeper level, actually. So therefore, we can see that uh, to use these important techniques, you know, in the spiritual levels, uh, it can take some time, you know, people can ask, can we control it? You know, only people who have gone through the pain, actually, they know how it is, <laughs> what it is, right? <laughs> Another important aspect I want to focus actually, how we can help someone, you know, when someone is going through this pain, what kind of environment we can make for them? Just mm -hmm. like if I am uh, in a pain, what kind of environment, you know, interaction I would expect from others? you know, the loving, friendly uh, communication, you know, patience, mm. uh, humbleness, uh, avail being available to uh, them, you know. So these are important areas actually we need to focus on, especially in helping someone mm. who is going through uh, different pains, mm. you know. Uh, so I don't like to take that much time uh, giving uh, time to other bandhis. Yeah. I'd like to stop here. Uh, from these couple of uh, areas. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, Bhante Sankicha. Uh, you actually shared uh, a lot of light uh, regarding uh, this, uh, uh, the, take, the way to handle with the physical and emotional pains. And as, uh, as you and others uh, said, you know, there could be multiple uh, causes, conditions behind these pains. And also there are uh, multiple ways to handle the physical pains and emotional pains. And the, as I remember, there's a, a term for it is in, psych, in, in psychoanalysis, there's a form of therapy called the psychosynthesis. It's a, a psyche, a psyche. I would, I would say Bhante, CBT, especially actually in pain management, one of the approaches is the cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, how to process it, you know, how to understand the reality behind the pain, our attitudes, mm -hmm. our emotions, yeah. how we interact with them. So that is one of the uh, techniques actually being used in psychology uh, in pain management. Amazing, amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, and we also have the presence of Bhante uh, Uparatana from uh, Washington, D.C., and also Bhante Nanda from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, uh, welcome to the discussion. I just saw both of you, and it's such a great joy to have you for this discussion. So now let us uh, go to uh, Bhante Chandananda from Ottawa. Uh, Bhante Chandananda, what's uh, in your mind? Uh, yes, uh, Bhante, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. So um, actually, I'm very grateful that uh, Bhante Sankhija pointed out something very significant. He said that to a certain extent, all of us are addicted to this pain. Unfortunately, yeah. actually, 20 years ago, before I started this Dharma practice, I uh, I could have not even imagined such a thing. Uh -huh. Because in a way, to a certain extent, all of us are like drug addicts. Uh, people know that it is harmful, yet we need a bit of that. Sometimes, actually, 
uh, when people do not have a problem, they invent a problem to suffer with. So <laughs> this also shows the gravity of the, the challenge we have to uh, overcome in uh, that is in overcoming suffering. So Bante, I would like to um, point out uh, one important aspect, uh, one important solution to this uh, question of how to overcome pain uh, that is less talk by uh, the Western psychologist. Uh -huh. Now, according to Buddhist point of view, we hear that uh, saying uh, with uh, regard to the life of uh, Venerable Angulimala, uh -huh. uh, the Pali stanza goes like this, uh, the phrase, yasa papang katang kammang kusalena pitiyati. The negative effects of uh, bad karma can be uh, offset or can be cancelled out to some extent by doing good karma. Mm -hmm, mm. So that's a very good news, I think. So mm. let's say if you are abused as a child, we, uh, I, we understand the emotional and even physical pain involved in that. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing, so as uh, many Bantes pointed out, that is there are many factors to give this kind of experience uh, to our life. So one thing is previous bad karma, and we can always do good karma to offset that, to counter that, and lessen uh, the effect in uh, the future lives and in the even in this life. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of repeating the cycle in abusing or uh, treating in a, uh, uh, treating another child in a bad manner, mm -hmm. we can do things like uh, helping a child. Now recently I uh, met a person. He he worries uh, in uh, obsessively he worries about uh, an abortion he had to uh, make. Mm. So uh, I, I'm not uh, I'm not saying abortion is okay. However, if uh, if that happened to you and if that pain is ob ob very obsessively coming to you as some guilty feeling, you can uh, save a child. Not not only a child, even saving an ant or a bee, that mm. also count in Buddhist point of view. Uh, so this is something very important and also about uh, physical pain. Uh, even, even now, uh, in meditation, sometimes we have very excruciating uh, knee pain, sometimes back pain, and in such situations, it is very uh, uh, important to observe that uh, the, the initial input of this physical pain, it is, not, it is actually not so terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, when we start to resist to that uh, physical pain, we multiply that pain, so that actually uh, we hear a good um, kind of formula. Uh, from psychologist, I have put uh, to uh, all of you. Uh, it says that uh, suffering equals pain into resistance. So I will uh, message that again to all of you. So this is really true. Uh, when we, uh, if we can maintain our mindfulness uh, into the very onset of that physical pain, we mm -hmm. do not react into that. We don't wish it to go away. We put the welcome mat, and in doing so, emotional pain. Uh, we can control, and this is a great solace. This is a great um, thing we can do, uh, and also uh, in uh, overcoming both modes of both uh, sorts of pains, emotional or physical. I think some something very important we do. Uh, we are habitually kind of hardwired to put the blame or responsibility of our uh, pain onto others. Yeah. Let's say people say, "I." I I'm I'm so awful. I'm so depressed because I was abused as a child. Mm -hmm. And that is true. That happened. But in Buddhist point of view, uh, we whatever happens in the past, we can always choose not to suffer, at least to some extent, when we are mindful and when we navigate our emotions in a wise way. Mm. So we I, actually I when people complain may, many times I say that. Uh, friend, uh, we were born because we wanted to be born. We wanted to enjoy more sights, sounds, taste, etc. So that we were born. So having born, please do not uh, blame others. Uh, ultimately, we have to take the responsibility of what happens in our life and we can choose to respond rather than reacting to situation. We can choose uh, wise responses in our way and um, one very important stanza speaks to this our topic in ratana sutta uh, there's a stanza kinam purana navan nati sambhavam viratta chitta ayatike bhavasin so on and so forth 
So it says that uh, something like this. Kinam uh, Purana, past come is spent, new come no more arises. Their mind to future becoming is unattached. unattached. Uh, they have no more desire for reliving. Those wise men fade out of existence as the flame of this lamp uh, fade away or goes out. So uh, we can one day with this practice, uh, we can one day uh, close the bank account with this ex existence, so to speak. And most important thing to uh, reach that end is to practice patience. Because mm -hmm. if we do not have patience, we, we react. Yeah. And in reacting, we accrue more bad karma yeah. to yeah. suffer with in the future. So I think uh, the Buddha's statement is very important here. Buddha said uh, quite often, Kanti Paraman Tapotitika, patience is the best of the spiritual practice. Yeah. Patience is the best of the spiritual practice. Thank you very much for uh, giving opportunity, Bhante. Yeah, thank you, Bhante Chandrananda. Uh, actually, one thing that you highlighted is so, uh, so true is that when, you, uh, when somebody goes through some pains, it's very essential to help them to do something good. I, I think that that's the very reason that Buddhist countries, like how they go to the temples and invite the monks to do the chanting, to bless them, even before they go to the go for the surgery, right? And so by then their uh, physical and, and psychological pains have been uh, reduced to a certain degree uh, because now they have the faith in these blessings. And also uh, it, there are people who do some dana ceremonies and uh, do meditation. So that, that helps a lot. So thank you uh, so much for bringing up that aspect of this healing technique. Uh, and uh, so let's uh, go to next uh, Bhante Jinananda from Ottawa. Bhante Jinananda, uh, what's in your mind? Yes, uh, I was listening to those wonderful state statements by erudite monks on techniques and practical solutions for dealing with pain. Uh, that's uh, really good. Uh, I just want to mention one thing, depending on the time, and that is about uh, the dealing with uh, pleasant feeling. Uh, many uh, people talk about dealing with uh, pain, yeah. uh, which is the unpleasant feeling, but uh, the Buddha's take uh, into this subject is wider than that. So in, in, in discourses, Buddha has uh, clearly mentioned that yang kinchi vedetan tandukkan tuadami, all kinds of feeling, whether it is pleasant, they are all uh, uh, taking us to a type of suffering. Mm. So that if you want to find uh, short-term solutions, all these uh, techniques, uh, short-term techniques uh, would be applicable, but uh, it, it is coming on and on so that uh, we have to find a better and long-term solutions to deal with negative emotions. So, so the Buddha solutions are not short-term. Uh, of course, uh, we can grab some sort of short-term solutions to uh, deal with uh, unpleasant feeling and pain. Uh, uh, but uh, what he has been for is to give us uh, permanent solutions to uh, uh, the, the, the difficulty of uh, accepting feeling so that uh, we can uh, uh, make a permanent solutions. So my suggestion is, uh, to understand all kinds of feeling as uh, coming from causes and condition. And if we are dealing better with uh, pleasant feeling, we would be able to find uh, solutions to unpleasant feeling too. And it could not be done uh, when the, uh, at the time we have unpleasant feeling because unpleasant feeling or pleasant feeling are too strong emotionally. And um, 99 people today are not, uh, uh, stopping those at the poses of any type of feeling so that it is better for us to understand the feeling as a whole and try to make up our mind uh, with the uh, with the buddha's meditation i think uh, this is why we always ask to uh, ask our uh, kind uh, compassionate people and friends to uh, 
and not to wait for something happen and start the training on feeling uh, so that uh, the time there are, there would be time that you can apply the teaching so when we hear the word like uh, uh, unpleasant feeling pain emotional things are like our teachers of course yes so you can take lessons from them time to time and get ready with those things so that uh, you could be able to uh, you know apply those teachings so once again, I just want to emphasize the fact that the feeling and emotions we could focus is not the unpleasant feeling very much, but mm. the pleasant feeling because it is so dangerous. And if you if you are looking for pleasantness in this life, mm -hmm. many times you get unpleasant feeling because that is the nature of this life. So that Kama Chanda, the very unwholesomeness that damages so much, Mm. Uh, was one of the things Buddha asked us to focus. So in the modern psychology or psychology that many people know would be speaking of dealing with unpleasant feeling very much, but uh, Buddha emphasized the fact that one has to deal with first pleasant feeling. And then you are, of course, working on unpleasant feeling according to uh, Buddha's meditation. Yeah. So just only that simple thing I just want to share because many monks were talking about very important things. That is my take and thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mante Jinanda. I think, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I know uh, uh, SN Goenka, uh, he, he is big on this. Uh, he himself went through a lot of physical pains. He suffered from uh, migraine headaches and other, other forms of uh, uh, the sicknesses. And uh, he became a, a meditation uh, teacher or, 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 or he, he spread the technique of Vipassana meditation because he uh, practiced the Vedana Vipassana a lot. It was the Vedana Vipassana meditation technique that helped him recover from uh, that, that uh, uh, physical and emotional pain. And he himself was the uh, 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 a very successful and accomplished entrepreneur. And then he uh, gave up that and he became a Vipassana meditation teacher uh, with the permission of his teacher from Myanmar. Now he popularized that Vipassana technique around the world just to bring healings to the people, especially those who are going through or suffering from physical and psychological uh, sufferings and pain. So thank you so much for bringing uh, our attention to that aspect of meditation on the feelings. So now let us uh, go to Verbal Trudeau from Florida, USA. Verbal Trudeau, what's in your mind? Uh, salutations to all the venerables and most venerables that's present today. Thank you for having me. So <clears throat> I, I, I wanted to just comment on the Vipassana before it escapes my mind. Mm -hmm. It's that, you know, initially now, we hear all of us laymen and laywomen uh, when we hear the practice of vipassana it seems simple but upon continuous practice regular practice it serves as a layer of protection in your life when that feeling does in fact arises there's a it's a blanket of protection for you and it is tools in your toolbox mm -hmm. that you can access at any time when these inevitable pain comes and in the intensity that it comes. So I just wanted to comment on that just for a little bit. Um, we, I wanted to bring the introduction of the relationship that we have with pain and suffering. And typically Americans, Westerners, and people in Europe, I mean, everyone around the world, when they hear pain and suffering, they run away from it. Like, who <laughs> wants to hear that? I mean, <laughs> everyone. But you see, pain can be awesome. Uh. Suffering can be awesome. In what ways? Well, the Buddha already, the Buddha was this great man that came and told us exactly what to expect. You see, young students they're always blowing things out of proportion, drawing conclusions without evidence. All these things are rooted in cognitive behavioral therapy. They do that because they don't know what to expect. You know, why are young people so unhappy? It's because the, the pressure to succeed, the, the, the things that they don't know what to expect, what is waiting for you outside that door? 
what is waiting for you in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s and so on. So here comes you know, blessed are those who got to hear the Dhamma. Blessed are those who opened up the books and that the books gave you these warnings. And so in a new <clears throat> in Guttara Nikaya 8.5, in the Patamaloka Tamma Sutang, the eight worldly things the Buddha told us that you're going to experience the following gain and loss, fame and infamy, infamy, blame, praise, happiness, suffering. These are all impermanent, passing, having a changeable nature. Having said that, we know that taking this rebirth realm as humans is that you're going to be subject to praise and blame. You're going to be experiencing suffering, suffering since birth. You study the lifespan perspectives and the theories of lifespan in psychology. You realize, oh, look, I was a baby too. You know, oh, yeah, I remember when I first felt the cold, the heat, uh, being uh, an infant. And subsequently, as I go through stages, I realize happiness is not having a toothache. <laughs> Everyone has had a tooth pulled before. Uh, you know, you go through these life and then subsequently you, you go down the road uh, of middle life, uh, being a man or a woman, and you realize old age, disease, decay. You realize prostate cancer is a possibility. You realize breast cancer is a possibility. Knowing that these things are hold, uh, waiting for us in store, we change our relationship towards it and we prepare ourselves to embrace it head on the warrior that you are the buddha emphasizes this greatly about the human capacity and the human will the willpower to in fact again the warrior that you are the the warrior of the mind the mind in the warrior to deal with these uh head on and not running away from them every teacher that you all see here present all the bhikkhus present here that you see have gone through these sufferings on it to some extent, mm. some more than others, like the Buddha have said. And that we, we know what it's like to, to suffer. and We know what pain is like and we have dealt with it and continuing to do so. It doesn't mean that we have to, that we're done suffering here. And, you know, I, through my own suffering as a young man, from the beginning to the middle and probably the end, you know, I would say that his teachings left us in all of the suttas, the methodology. I'm ready for it. And when he said, when I quoted the, the Nkutra Nikaya, and when he says that all chains are impermanent, we know from research, from science, that even if you are paraplegic, all right, so here you are baseline happiness level, and then you become paraplegic. So you're going to get a little unhappy. It's going to be a downward. And then subsequently, you will actually come back to baseline. Mm. And the total opposite could also be said is if you are going to win the lottery today, this is the same baseline happiness and bloop, you get really happy because you, you won the lottery. But then subsequently, it will come down to baseline. Mm. That is these are impermanent passing having a changeable nature said the buddha so i invite everyone if you have not practiced vipassana if you have not practiced samadhi interchangeable whichever comes first to really look at it look at the toolbox look at the four protective meditation functions found in the visuti maga because it has protective functions that will serve you very well uh, in life now and in the future and within your immediate friends and family that will learn the skills to deal with suffering and pain head on mm -hmm. and i'm telling you I, I, i've dealt with it it's awesome you have no choice you have to deal with it the more you run away from it the more you compound it yeah. so you might as well take the words from the wise from all of the wise here the, 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 head on deal <laughs> with it and subsequently, you will, it will propel you. The more suffering, we have a mixture of pleasure and pain and 
suffering and sadness and joy and happiness. These are good mix that propels you for enlightenment. If you don't like, if you don't want to be human again, if you don't want to experience old age, death, decay, disease, then practice what needs to be practiced, know what needs to be known and do what needs to be done so that you achieve enlightenment once and for all. I've said that over and over again. Uh, so, you know, that. when when they come to us, you know, we're like, have you suffered enough? Yes, no. Because students tend to go back into the samsaric wheel of relationships, toxicity, all these things, right? And the, the teacher will usually look at them and say, you've had it, yes? Or, or, or were we still doing this? <laughs> and if you've had it, you will make a sheer determination to go forth and try to achieve these stages of enlightenment, uh, yeah. the four stages. Thank you. I, I like to use the floor back to all of the venerables. Thank you for having. Me. Yeah, thank you. I, I think I, I really love that how the pain is awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's an awesome pain that uh, transforms your life, right? It's a, and also, thank you so much for bringing our attention to the Attaloka Dhamma, eight uh, life conditions. I said that is another best uh, technique to uh, deal with your own uh, physical pains. So, uh, next, let's go, go to uh, Bante. Ananda uh, from uh, Cambridge, uh, Ontario, Canada. Bhante Ananda, what's in your mind? Thank you, Andrew Bells. So uh, I would uh, like to bring a touch base upon a few points. Uh, firstly, there's this beautiful sutra called the Salla Sutra. And it's very interesting that uh, we are talking about pain. And yeah. then uh, in that sutra, Buddha says that uh, we, we could uh, definitely divide two types of, or we can identify two types of pain, pains. One is the physical pain that you endure and the other one is the mental pain. And uh -huh. uh, uh, if you try to divide these two pains, you might see that uh, the physical pain and the mental pain are absolutely two different things. So the person who does not understand the works, the mechanics of mind, he thinks that uh, the physical pain stemming uh, and the uh, causation of mental pain are the same thing. But if you try to divide these two, you would find that the physical pain is one thing which is unavoidable which is uh, even Buddha couldn't do anything about it. But the mental pain, you can do a lot about it. It's actually a way that you uh, opt to think. So Bhante Sankhya puts a comment saying that the suffering, uh, the pain is inevitable and the suffering is optional. So it goes beautifully uh, with this. The physical pain is inevitable, but the mental pain is definitely optional. And having said that, uh, the second part of it is that uh, when you try to solve problems, now these things come because the pains, the stresses, they come because of some uh, underlying cause. And when you try to, when you try to uh, re resolve these uh, uh, pains, physical and uh, mental, it's very important that you treat the physical uh, problems and the physical pains with physical solutions and the mental pains with the mental solutions. And when you look at the makeup of that, maybe the physical pains add up to 50%. And the mental pains add up to the rest of the 50%. Mm -hmm. Let's say that you try to find a physical solution for the physical problem. So you are able to cut down it by half. So the 50 becomes 25 now. And uh, the mental problems, if you are able to cut down it, it would uh, come to another half. So it's 50%. Although I put it like that, usually you would find physical problem is only 20%, but the mental problem is 80% in any case. Uh, now, how do I do that? Is I always put my body into different tests. It's my first winter when I came to Canada last November. So uh, we have this trail uh, down in front of our monastery. I walked barefoot uh, on that uh, trail to see what's the difference between the physical pain and the mental pain in minus uh, 15, 20 uh, okay. that your body can withstand like uh, what the ice man does. And I always put my body into such uh, uh, tests to see what is the what is the margin between the physical pain and the mental pain. And then I often find uh, things like uh, cold, or heat, that you are, you become very uncomfortable, you become very irritable. Actually, it's a state of mind more than the physical body responding to uh, that particular sensation. So similarly, in, in any type of situation you come across, if you can divide the physical pain and the mental pain, you will find that the physical pain is very small. It, it's actually a very small percentage, but the bigger portion is the mental pain. And the uh, final point I want to suggest is that these problems, the pains, uh, sufferings, they are all like um, a book. So in this book, I have a single page which can be torn very easily. It's very easy to tear one single page. But if I take the entire book, 
I will never be able to tear this book. So problems are also like that. When we when we come across problems, we think that they come all together. But actually, if we try to separate these physical pains, mental pains uh, separately, you think that you can address them one by one and uh, it's very easy. The mm -hmm. same way that while we are having these Zoom discussions, we might be getting messages on our WhatsApp. But uh, imagine that we got 100 messages on WhatsApp. Still, no human or no device can check all those messages at one time simultaneously. Mm -hmm. You can only check one message at a time. So the same goes with our pains. We can only address one pain at a time. But no, without knowing that, we try to address all the pains uh, simultaneously. And that's not humanly possible. That's not divinely possible. So one pain at a time. And the, um, and the key is, again, like uh, many Bhantes, very venerables mentioned, uh, being mindful about it. If you try to separate between each and every pain, the physical pains, the mental pains, and the different uh, psychological thought chains. If you try to divide this, you can uh, divide and conquer. So that's my message. Yeah, thank you. That's a great, great analogy. And also, thank you so much for bringing uh, the reference to the Sangha Sutta. I think uh, how our Buddha talks about the physical pain and the psychological pain, and we need to separate. And and if we can deal with the pain by pain, right? <laughs> and it's like, you know, getting rid of one thing it brings you a huge relief then you can deal with the next one <laughs> so eventually we can get rid of all these things so thank you so much for bringing our attention to that uh, sutta um next i know bante kusala raised your hand but for, i would like to go to bante nanda this is your <laughs> first time and bante nanda we, we would like to hear from you uh, Bhante Nanda from Alberta, Canada. Uh, what's in your mind? Thank you, uh, Bhante, for giving me the opportunity. I would like to go with uh, one of uh, some of my own experience. Yeah. One of them is uh, we should let go of our pain. Ah. So without letting go, I think some of our Bhantes mentioned that point. I have uh, one experience. The, there was a uh, person who, who is uh, originally from Georgia, came to our center five years ago, I guess. When he came uh, to our place, he was re really uh, aggressive. And uh, whenever he, had, he has a problem, he tried to solve with it uh, physically, not wisely. Oh. So uh, when I talked with him uh, for so long, and I taught him to practice uh, loving kindness meditation, mm -hmm. and then uh, his aggressiveness uh, lesser and lesser, but still there are some uh, residue. But uh, uh, when I talk with uh, more and more with him, he told me that uh, his parents were abusive when he was a child, mm. and he cannot uh, forgive them. He cannot let go it. I told that it is already gone. Mm. You cannot change anything in your in in your past. They are your parents, even though they abuse you, abuse you. They are, they are your parents. Mm. forgive them and let go your pain this is your pain not their pain you make that pain for yourself it it was happened in the past but you recall it and uh, again you are generating the same sort of surrounding situation in your uh, mentally especially mentally and it make cause physical and mental uh, difficulties in, in yourself. Mm. So that is one thing. Mm. And the other thing is, uh, other thing was mine. So when I was practicing meditation, uh, there was a really unbearable pain in my back. Mm -hmm. uh, one day I was uh, listening to my teacher, teacher's talk, and he was explaining his own experience about pain uh, what what, uh, what was it uh, it was that 
his teacher asked him when he talks about pain he his teacher was asking from him did you sit with the pain mm. <laughs> so we were so much attached to our pain and it was the my case and i thought that i have set up my pain after 45 minutes of sitting so i was welcoming that pain it has to be calm at uh, 45 minutes of sitting of my meditation practice so we were attached to it then if i let go it i will be free so pain or whatever the feelings that we are feel it is depending on our wisdom and our uh, practice so it is different from the different person yeah if it is so if it is if that pain is a uh, con- uh, ultimate truth it has to be equal to any everyone but it is not yeah so that that is what i wanted to share with you today thank, thank you very much ananda for sharing your personal story how you dealt with your own pain and i said that's a very encouraging and inspiring people could uh uh reflect on this uh whenever we meditate like in a are we doing the meditation with the pain or sitting with the pain or are we sitting for meditation without the pain and if we engage with the pain pain is going to be lasting and if we learn to disengage from the pain pain will be gone right so that's the best way to look at it so bante kusala uh what's your next thought on today's subject well um, bante i know the time is running short uh, so um this story is from ajan braham um there was a lady um who approached braham um and said um, i took my husband on a trip he didn't want to go and i was the driver i was driving and i broke his leg because i caused an accident and i i have so much remorse and guilt um so i kept going to different people and nobody helped me and and am i at fault so braham said yes you are at fault so she needed to hear that at first because everybody was saying no you are not at fault you didn't intend to do that so then after hearing that uh, she was ready to really like sometimes she was attached to the response she had in her mind then only she was ready to uh, hear something more at that point uh, like bante uh, matumugala chandananda said you know ajan braham encouraged her to do good karma in place of uh, the remorse that she was feeling in that he suggested her to donate prosthetic legs to people uh, as much as possible and that way she feels better and she did greater things so i think with that uh, i like to highlight something bante sankitcha mentioned in the chat he said pain is inevitable suffering is optional i think uh, buddhism teaches us avoiding this suffering for good uh, ultimately and that is why we are coming together as monks and sharing this dhamma uh, thank you very much for the this time bante Yeah, thank you Bhante Kosala. I think uh, everything depends on how you deal with it. There are two terms, right? The reaction and uh, and response and and pain and suffering uh depends on how you emotional reacting to it. But if you're just uh, responding to the pain with the wisdom uh and without personalizing the pain as I me myself and I think then pain won't be a suffering, I guess. So today I would like to hear something from uh, uh Venerable Jaya Sara. Today is your first time. I know you will mindfully listen to us. Uh, do you have anything to share with us Venerable Jaya Sara? Bonte actually it was uh, just recently brought up and the, the thing that really comes to my mind and it's a sutta that I reflect on often is the Sala Sutta. Yeah. The simile of the arrow. <clears> or <throat> the Buddha is telling us about our our underlying tendencies towards physical pain towards mental pain right? when pain arises we seek to you know the only escape that we know is to drown that pain out with pleasant feeling right and this is as people have already mentioned this or we use drugs or we use even food in my case 
you know, we, we use all, any kind of pleasant experience to, <clears throat> to overtake that um, pain. And what I've uh, enjoyed hearing um, from multiple Bantes today is the, uh, the face the pain, go, you know, this kind of like, you know, almost like tough love, like, you know, face it, be <laughs> courageous, you know, and because that's how uh, I, you know, practice. And I, I, you know, I also encourage people to be the same. So I, I appreciate this. So, yeah, and it's yeah. wonderful to be with uh, just a huge Mahasanga here. So it's good <laughs> to spend time with you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Venerable uh, Jai Sara. And of course, uh, today is your first day. I know you're going to be part of this year after. And also, please spread the word and you can invite other variables as well, you know? I will. Uh, more I will, better. <laughs> so uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's bi-weekly uh, discussion and uh, before we say goodbye to each other I would like to uh, invite uh, our uh, Bhante Uparatana uh, uh, Uparatana Nayaka Hamadura from Washington DC uh, to uh, recite uh, the Ova the Patimokka verses uh, Uparatana Nayaka Hamadura Thank you and a very great Dhamma discussions with the, with the pain we everybody do discussing we are collecting more information thank you so much wish you happy uh uh party marker day for this coming full moon day for everyone and wish you long life and good health thank you namo tas bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhas. Namo tas bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhas. Sab papas akar nang kusalas up sampada sachit pariyo dap nang etam buddhan sas nang Kanti paramang tapu titikha nibbanam paramang vadanti buddha nahi pab jito parup gati samanohoti Parang vihet yanto Anup vado Anup gato Pati mokhe cha sangvaro Matanyo ta cha bhatanta summing Hantan cha sayana Adi chitti cha ayogo etam buddhana sasanam. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante Bharatana, for beautifully reciting the Patimokka verses. Uh, as I always listen to this chanting, I feel like I'm, I'm in the Buddha's time. <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, I and I would like to uh, bring the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha to all of you uh, uh, for making this great contribution by coming together and sharing your insights with uh, us, and uh, sharing Dhamma with us and with our friends around the world. And I think uh, this is such a great meritorious deed. We are uh, giving the Dhamma Dana virtually for the greater benefit of all sentient beings and so may all blessings of the buddha dhamma the sangha uh, continue to be with you for your long life 
good health, happiness, peace of mind. May devas, celestial beings, continue to protect and guard all of you with the divine blessings for your health and safety. And may all the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha be with you. Uh, with these uh, thoughts in mind, well, let's say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Oh. So good night from Canada. I will see you all in two weeks' time. Thank you.